Uh, this is a great day for South Carolina. It's been a long time coming, and we see great progress coming right now. I'm pleased to be announcing that I have selected Eden Hendrick to be the next director for the Department of Juvenile Justice. As you know, she's been acting since September. She's done a magnificent job uh, since then, and we could, we could not do any better than to allow Director Hendrick to bring her time and talents full-time into this position. She's a graduate of the University of South Carolina School of Law. She earned and served as assistant solicitor for the Fifth Circuit Solicitor's Office, where she led the office's efforts in family court, prosecuting and disposing of over a thousand cases a year. She served as one of the Department of Social Services lead attorneys, representing the agency in family court proceedings, foster care cases, and vulnerable adult cases. In addition, she's traveled the state advocating for the adoption of foster children as an attorney for the State Foster Care Review Board. Also, Ms. Hendrick is recipient of the 2016 Ernest F. Hollings Award for Excellence in State Prosecution in Family Court. Since arriving at Department of Ju Juvenile Justice, Ms. Hendrick has instituted new compensation and classification for juvenile correction officers to raise their pay and provide bonuses for service and recruitment efforts. She's begun a wholesale restructuring of the agency executive leadership team. She's begun the process of moving the entire executive leadership team back behind the fence at the Broad River Road facility. In fact, she was the first one to move in. She's also assembled a team of child advocacy leaders who are working tirelessly to solve the issues of juveniles with severe mental illness being incarcerated rather than receiving treatment. It is clear to me and to all of us that Ms. Hendrick is the right one for this job at this time. We are lucky to have someone talented, experienced, and dedicated that is willing to take on this formidable task and get DJJ on the right track for all the young people in our state. Uh, it is not necessary to look any further. Uh, I believe there's more talent in South Carolina than, than we even recognize, but we have certainly recognized this talent and experience, and this is the best choice that, that we can imagine to fill this particular position at this time. I believe that the Senate will agree, and I hope they will confer, confirm Ms. Hendrick soon, and we'll be sending the package up today for their consideration. Ms. Hendrick. Thank you. First, I would like to thank the governor for this opportunity to permanently lead the agency. DJJ has been a passion of mine since 2005, right when I graduated from law school and immediately began to work in family court with DJJ in 2005 at the Fifth Circuit Solicitor's Office. I am well aware of the challenge I have before me. This is not an easy task or a change that can happen overnight. There's often a misconception that DJJ is just the facility off a of Broad River Road, when in fact DJJ actually runs three facilities off a of Broad River Road, a facility in Ridgeville and Union. DJJ has 10 alternative placements, which includes many camps and wilderness institutes and marine institutes. There are also community specialists in 46 counties that provide intake, probation, and intensive probation services to those youth. DJJ facilitates an array of prevention programs across the state. DJJ operates 45 teen after-school centers. The governor's office allocated millions of dollars of GEARS funds to front-end services, including providing 675 Chromebooks to these teen after-school centers. These Chromebooks were crucial in many of the rural areas where the school districts were not able to provide these resources to the youth. The GEAR funds have also allowed DJJ to facilitate evidence-based therapeutic practices to youth and families while in the community to prevent and instead of secure placements. It is so important to remember that DJJ is more than the Broad River Road facility, but we can never lose sight of DJJ's responsibility to care for the youth in our custody. That means preparing youth for reentry by providing effective educational, vocational, medical, recreational, and clinical services. DJJ employees only work at DJJ for one reason, because they care about the youth. 
I am so honored and humbled to have had the opportunity to work with these special people over the past five months every day. As the director of DJJ, it is my goal to improve the outcomes for the youth system wide, but also ensure that all DJJ employees have a safe and secure working environment. Reforming DJJ will be complicated and a difficult process that will take time. I am optimistic and inspired by the change that has occurred in the past five months since I've been there, and I'm confident that this trend will continue. We have begun the process of moving employees who provide direct care services and executive management back to DJJ campuses. We are modernizing many of the DJJ-owned buildings, implementing new technologies, and working with national experts to improve our policies and procedures. This spring semester, we have eight students that have left DJJ and are now enrolled in college. Some of these youth would probably have dropped out of high school and now are thriving on college campuses. We have 11 more students taking college courses while at our facilities. We have an extremely successful GED passage rate, and this spring semester, we have the highest number of students on diploma track in recent years. DJJ has partnered with other state agencies such as SEDC, SLED, Department of Public Safety, Triple P, and Criminal Justice Academy to increase security on our campuses. I've also asked funds to help DMH build a state-run facility for those seriously mentally ill youth have been, who have been forced to remain at DJJ against state law. With these youth appropriately placed at psychiatric residential treatment facilities, DJJ will be able to focus its efforts on other youth and hopefully attract and obtain and retain effective staff members. Again, I would like to thank everyone who's present here today and who has supported me along my way, and I look forward to working with everyone to better DJJ and better the youth of our state. And I thank the governor for this opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. I'm Leon Lott, Sheriff of Richland County, and I'm here to speak on behalf of law enforcement. Director Hendricks has been a breath of fresh air for us. She has done so much in these five months at DJJ. Um, Governor, you couldn't pick a better person. Uh, she talked about passion. I saw that passion with Ms. Hendricks when she worked for the Celestia's office, and I've seen that passion at DJJ. I've had the opportunity to go with her and spend time at DJJ and looked at the facilities, and that's just bricks and mortar. What, I, what impressed me the most is how she cared. She cared about the staff. She cared about the young people out at DJJ. Just her interaction with them, the personal relationships that she's building with all of her staff, but also with those young people. She cares about them. That's one thing that I saw that makes her stand out probably than anybody else I've ever seen at DJJ is just how much she cares. She wants those young people to be successful, but she also wants to protect the community. Unfortunately, some of them have to stay at DJJ, but she's gonna give them the opportunity to move forward. Just like the staff there, they need support, they need help, they need somebody who cares, and, and she does. She knows them, she talks to them, they like her, they like her. I saw that, and I continue to see that. So, Governor, you picked the right choice. She's gonna do a great job there, but law enforcement is behind her all, all the way. She is part of the criminal justice system, which we all are, she's going to be a very successful part of the criminal justice system. So thank you, Director. Thank you, Sheriff. Good morning. My name is Michelle Dundashaw, and I'm the director of the Children's Law Center at the University of South Carolina School of Law. I have known Director Hendrick for over 11 years as a colleague and a friend, and I am proud to stand here today to endorse her as the director of the Department of Juvenile Justice. Um, I first came to know Director Hendrick when we worked together at the Foster Care Review Board. And from the day we interviewed uh, Director Hendrick, her passion for making things better for children was evident. And as you can see from her resume and the, the kind remarks by Governor McMaster and Sheriff Lott, she has been committed to making things better for kids, whether it was in the family court system, um, adjudicating juvenile justice offenses, whether it was at the foster care review board advocating for permanent homes for children as a DSS attorney representing the state of South Carolina and helping children and families reunite, and now as the director of the Department of Juvenile Justice. Director Hendrick has the heart, the brain, Right, and the commitment to make juvenile or the Department of Juvenile Justice 
what it needs to be for our kids. And I'm proud to stand here today um, and wish her the best of luck in this endeavor. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, I'm Senator Penry Gustafson, and I am here to support um, Governor McMaster in his uh, appointment for our new director of DJJ. Um, South Carolina, many of us have been concerned about, um, we've been concerned about DJJ and how it has gone downhill and how it has had all sorts of um, challenges. And I will tell you this, on behalf of the General Assembly, I, I support her. And I think that passion that was described, the passion combined with the knowledge and the experience, she really is a good fit. And serving on the task force, she knows what she's walking into, and she smiles as she's doing it. So um, I just we, we just want to wish her well and know that um, if there's anything we can do as legislators to support her in this new role, we are definitely happy to do so and welcome. Congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. Senator Malloy. Good morning. Um, Governor, thanks for the opportunity. I'm a little hoarse today. I'm Gerald Malloy, um, Senate District 29, Darlington, Marlboro, Chesterfield, and Lee Counties. I start by saying the real moral test of any government is how do you treat those that are in the twilight of their lives, the seniors, those in the shadows of their lives, those that have disabilities that may be incarcerated, or those that are in the dawn of their lives, it's the children. We're talking about now those that may be in the dawn and that are in the shadows. So it's a real important task that we have as a government as to how do we end up treating those individuals. The governor has um, shed his light all over South Carolina and picked Eden Hendricks. Um, I met her um, some years ago, probably long before she became a lawyer and knew her father. But more importantly, I think during the time that we started working on issues of juvenile justice. And so what we have done is that these problems are problems that occur in every community and they're not too difficult to handle because it involves the children. So I started working on the Juvenile Justice Reform Act after Raise the Age, and she worked hand in hand with us. And so what we have now is we have a bill that's out, that's out there, 53, that I hope that we will all get a chance to embrace and endorse that will help give the Department of Juvenile Justice some tools. Here's what I found during the process. She has empathy, she has compassion, but she has a strong arm of the law as well. What better balance you can have to be able to oversee a group of children that we have in our state. We know that the brain does not develop well until you're about 25 years old. But as we go out and look now, we have over 100 and some odd children behind the fence when we have capacity for 70 some odd behind the fence. We know that we got to give her some tools to be successful. So we don't want to put her there and not have the tools, but she's willing to do that already. She went out already demonstrated over the last five months that she's willing to end up making some changes, change the office, got closer to the people. The morale has changed, and I think that that system of what she is putting in place already shows us what's going to happen in the future. So um, I want to, um, to be able to go, to go forward, tell the legislature, with her help, to move forward, to give her the tools that it would take to be successful. And Governor, I want to thank you for um, for making a good, a good choice. My last comment is this. <clears throat> Sometimes things are difficult, and during difficult times, two things can happen. One is bad, but the other one is inspiring whenever people of strong will would get together to make a difference for good. And when you have someone that has the right person, the right time, and the right tools, we know that we can get together and make things work for good. So I think today is an endorsement for the children of South Carolina that we made a change, that we have someone that will come in and be able to effectively lead this agency. And so, Governor, I join with you in your efforts in appointing Ms. Um, Hendricks and look forward to working with you toward her confirmation. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. As you can see, there's a lot of excitement uh, involved in this appointment, and we, we believe our great days are ahead. It'll be a lot of work. We got a lot of work to do, but we we know what we need to do, and and we have someone leading 
that that agency that knows exactly what to do has the experience, the knowledge, the compassion, and all that it takes. And she's a South Carolinian. And well, as I say, we've got lots of talent in South Carolina. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, Ms. Yeah. Hendrick, uh, what were some of the major problems you found with DJ Jacobs over in town? What are your goals to kind of improve things even more? Well, of course, first and foremost, everyone always thinks about staffing, our low numbers of staffing across the agency, mainly in the juvenile correctional officer position. And a lot of that has to do with low morale and some of the things going on at the facility. So that, of course, was one of the first things I wanted to address. I've done that by creating sign-on bonuses, retention bonuses, or even working on another JCO compensation plan for the future. Um, and we've hired a private company to do um, an analysis of what type of individual it is to become a juvenile uh, JCO and have a contract with them to do a whole recruitment um, and retention project. We're also doing things very differently in the way we do little things across the agency. To, um, from the moment someone applies online to DJJ, reads the application, or goes through on the onboarding process, the whole process we've changed to make it more friendly and let people know that the real reason they're coming to work at DJJ is for the youth. We're having a hiring fair next Saturday on the 26th, and we've actually done something that we've never done before. We've invited what's known as the insiders, who are the top youth in our facility, who are kind of the spokesperson for the agency. We're actually having them come to the hiring fair to meet the candidates so that the candidates know what they're get, what this is about, why they're coming to work at DJJ. It's not just another job. It's not going to work at SCDC. It's very different. And so we're hoping that this interaction with the youth from the very beginning will help us recruit and maintain better employees. Also, we are um, working to really help a subset of the youth that are um, behind the fence, so to say, those that are seriously mentally ill and should not be behind the fence and need another type of care. So we're very optimistic that if we can appropriately care for those youth not behind the fence, that some of the issues that DJJ have, have plagued DJJ might alleviate, that we can actually focus more on some of the youth we have the capability to rehabilitate. It's not that these youth cannot be rehabilitated, it's just DJJ is not the appropriate place for them. More questions? With the community at large, you know, obviously there's been a lot of stories that have been not so, you know, positive for DJJ. How do you plan to restore that trust with these new agencies in the community? Well, I think a lot of the things we talked about too is, um, you know, restoring the um, faith and the morale in our employees because that's your best source of information or the people who actually work at DJJ. You know, I've made a lot of efforts to personally go out and meet a lot of the employees. I am on campus every day. I walk around campus. I interact with the youth and the employees. And so just knowing that we're there to support them is one of the big things, but also making strides in the community. I think people forget about all the good things that DJJ is actively doing in our 46 counties. I mean, those teen after school centers provide a vital service in the community. So I think if we can remember that DJJ is more than that facility on Broad River Road, that is just a small subset of the youth that DJJ serves. We are serving so many other youth in the community, and we like to serve more youth in the community with juvenile justice reform, as Senator Malloy made. That's our real goal, is to provide those services where the youth can remain, be rehabilitated in the community, and before they come to DJJ. However, we recognize there will be some youth at DJJ, but as long as we can provide them with the appropriate services, I think we will transform our reputation.